Right, in this video, I am ill, I'm gonna paint Star Wars, and I'm gonna use some new products, and it's gonna turn out really well. That is it. Tune in if you like those things. Not me being ill, don't be cruel. I'm tired enough already. <laughs> all right, so as you'll have seen, I am ill, but I'm gonna try and remember all the things I have to remember for this video. So, number one, we have a new texture palette design. It's gonna be available first in the format of something brand, brand, brand new for us. It's huge. An extra, extra large texture palette. So the same design, which just looks brilliant, big. Uh, not really surprising because it was designed by a pretty talented graffiti artist. Shout out to Hauks, um, who did a Gene Stealer cult graffiti in Manchester, which kind of went viral a while ago. Talented man. Anyway, this looks great, huge. It's now halfway between like desk protector, cutting mat, texture palette, hybrid, loads of working space for your paint, indestructible as normal because that's how we do things. But uh, yeah, they are available now from the store. There will be a link below. Number two. Be painting the Star Wars. I always like painting the Star Wars. Um, so <laughs> that looks great on camera, doesn't it? Look at that. That makes me look better than I am. Um, so this turned out really well. This is a very, very full on tutorial like the last one. You know, uh, do feel free to skip through the uh, initial paint testing on the palette if you want to just get through to the model. But segue, I'm trying out some brand new paints in this tutorial. I'm only using these paints, nothing else. And these paints were designed, brand is called Archive X. They were designed to be the most accurate Star Wars paints available in the world for scale model painting. So they should be the best tools for the job, right? If I'm painting Star Wars. And then, um, spoiler, they're pretty good. They're quite matte, which took a little bit of adjustment, but I think they're amazing. This color in particular, whether black, no, I haven't used all the range yet, but out of the ones that I have used, that is just never gonna leave my desk. That's awesome, I really like that. Um, loads of greys, loads of browns, uh, quite a decent selection of kind of drab, uh, like, you know, the colors you'd expect from Star Wars, basically, you know, like somewhat military ones. Um, really, really nice to play with, quite creamy, um, but a little bit of adjustment. So this video is me attempting to give you a completely honest one take, at least initial batch, um, perception of how they are with me just trying to do something straight away with no practicing off camera. Uh, that nearly worked until technology failed. Let us know what you think of the format of the video and if you would like to see us trying out more new products uh, or trying to you know source things that we don't think other people would have used uh, in future videos. I don't know if it's something that our viewers find interesting or not. This is halfway between a tutorial and a review. Let us know what you think of the format and uh, yeah thanks very much for tuning in and uh, I'll catch you in the outro. All right, guys, so we have a couple of very new things going on here. This isn't very new. This is an old thing that we've painted before, but what we're going to be doing is we're going to be giving this quality of treatment, hopefully, to a piece with actual correct paint. So pretty excited to try these out. These are the most accurate set of Star Wars paints available in the world from Archive X. Super excited to try them out. No reason to expect they won't be anything other than brilliant, but you know, we do need to test how they work with the D, first of all. So really excited about that. Also, you might notice we've got a brand new texture palette design. So this has got more working space around the edge than our normal one. And the idea of that is a, a lot of people um, ask about paints drying out and things like that. The non-engraved surfaces are slightly less absorbent. Well, they're quite a lot less absorbent actually. So for people who don't prime their palettes, I prime mine. I would suggest you do likewise. Uh, even if you do prime, it makes a bit of a difference, but especially if people who don't prime, this should make the surrounding area better for holding your paint, for stopping it from drying out, give you more working space. And what we've done is we've got a bit of space extra bottom right and bottom left. So it doesn't matter if you're right or left-handed and then load across the top for testing squares and stuff like that. So brand new texture palette design, super excited to give it a go. It's gonna be tweaked a little bit, but it's pretty much gonna be like this. They'll be available to be ordered down below. However, I just spoke about it being primed, so let's sort that out right now. Okay, so there we go. Not a heavy prime, just a light one. Chaos Black, as always. If you are doing dry brushing, do not prime your palette with a matte primer spray for various reasons. Basically, the fact that it's absorbent, I don't feel it's a good idea. So, got our palette down now. Let's jump into some comprehensive testing of the range. And basically, the idea of this is to see how it works for stippling. Okay, so 
nothing different going on here. I'm just going to do this completely as normal. I'm going to treat it first like I'm base coating. So a little bit more water than normal rather than the normal one drop. It's kind of somewhere between one and two drops. Still work it in thoroughly. Get it on the bristles pre. Let's give this a go. wonder how wet it is. This is the first time for me guys, so pretty excited. This is weathered black. Kind of a brownie black. Agitators in the bottles, nice. Seal in here, no seal in here, okay. Okay, have to spooge a bit to get past the initial medium heavy section. That can happen in these lids. They're fairly travel safe, I understand why people use them. All right, let's go. So things we're looking here for here are quality of coverage, consistency, the consistency is creamy. Uh, we're good. <laughs> I feel like I'm going to straight away jump to another colour. This feels great though. Let's see if we can get past that medium splodge. Nope. Or a little. Okay, that's a bit thicker in terms of the viscosity. That's definitely a bit thicker than the other one was. Not a huge difference, but a little one. So some variation within the colours. Worth noting, how do they mix with each other? Very nicely. This is going to base coat really well. I imagine this would airbrush well as well, given that that's what it's designed to do. That should be, uh, should be good. Let's try and do a little bit of a blend on the palette. And some normal dry brushing, once we've worked off the excess. Okay. Coverage isn't insane which if it's been designed for airbrushing kind of makes sense, but also will make it easier to get blends with. And maybe some of the colors that are more thought of as basing colors have got better coverage. Don't know. Give it a dot. Ooh. <laughs> okay, another wet one. In the middle of the other two. It's a nice color that, what's that? Be for orange. These are going to be brilliant for stippling. Um, they might not be like finishing final edge highlight paints as a result of their coverage. I'm kind of tempted to go and find myself a white now. I am tempted to go and find myself a white. Be right back. Okay, got a white. Do let us know whether us trying out new ranges and kind of giving them on the fly reviews is something that you're interested in. That's thicker. Um, because I've got a lot of opinions about paints and products. Obviously, they're fairly well informed. Not perfect, but fairly well informed. Okay, that's actually got... The white has got surprisingly good coverage. Interesting. That's really good coverage. Okay. Hmm. So I wonder if the white has been formulated to be that finisher or that final highlight color. Interesting. The white comes off a bit drier, which often is, is going to be something you can't avoid with whites if you're going to try and make them cover. So noted, need to be careful of that chalking. All right, we're good though. So that might not seem like much of a test. I'm pretty sure that's given me 90% of the information I'm going to need though to use these on a model. We've done it on a primed surface, albeit a slightly more absorbent one than normal. So if anything, they should behave better on a Chaos Black primed model. And what better a combination, um, sorry, a comparison then us taking exactly the same piece as we have here, which was painted with these three Vallejo paints. And then let's see what we can do using the actual ones that are made to match the original, like the actual originals, as in the models from the studio that were used in the original films. So uh, let's give it a bash. Right, this is gonna be a one take. So I've got my paints lined up behind me. Hello there. And we're just going to try and do this block, or at least two sides of this block minimum, start to finish, completely unedited. Um, maybe we'll speed up some aspects if I'm just, you know, bombing my way through. But uh, yeah, the intent is to do this basically in a one And hopefully it goes okay. I've not used these paints largely before. We've got a texture palette of testing. Let's just rock in. So I've blocked them out in terms of the order that I think they're going to be used in. These are kind of mid-weathering ones. This is an awesome color. I'm all over that. Um, 
and then this is the intent for the, the block of it. Now, I can tell you before I've even begun what I'm gonna do wrong as far as trying to do an accurate representation of an ATST goes. The ATST is largely one pretty light color, which is this one. And I love contrast. And this is too dark, this is mine. Um, you know, I really like that variance going on there. So technically I'm gonna fail at that. I can say, you know, even if I try my best to do a flat color, I just won't be able to make myself and I quite like the look of the variation. So what we're gonna say is that this is gonna be heavily lit from one side. I'll do my normal top right. So just like this black here is more light here and more dark here. That's what our gray is gonna be reflecting. Aside from that, nothing else to add really. You've primed it chaos black as per normal. Let's get on with the base coat and fingers crossed that this goes okay. I don't have a timer. I do have a timer. I'm curious how long this is gonna take me. All right, no pressure, <laughs> let's go. So, base coating. Now, for base coating, rather than the normal one drop off the back of the brush, you want two drops of water, that is, and the reason for that is we're looking to get a nice, high quality, thin base coat. We don't want anything thick or adding texture to our model. Uh, that's not the intent. We're gonna get a tiny bit of texture as long as we base coat by brush anyway, that's absolutely fine. So I'm not intending on post shading this, which is when you go back and add shading afterwards, it might end up being a necessity. So we're gonna start from a kind of a, a mid dark gray. I've got a black here. I'll probably mix a little bit of that in, but the sequence that I'm planning on going through is this. Hopefully that's about right, fingers crossed. <laughs> this is the... Uh, the idea is that this is a uh, an honest uh, first impressions of a rage, so uh, hopefully you guys can forgive me for this seeming like the least planned thing ever, because the point is that it isn't planned. I'm just gonna do what I would do on a model if there was a camera here or not. So we've got our dark gray down. Let's get some of the main body color out there. Light big bottles, just easier to shake. It's a nice color, but it is light. Yeah, I'm, I'm really gonna struggle to do this accurately and light enough. And then we'll get down a bit of this black. Ooh, silky. That seems like quite a nice black. Already getting distracted. Ooh, interesting. Kind of oily, I like that. Okay. Base coat, so we're gonna take a little bit of the black, roll off that, shouldn't need too much. And some of our mid gray. That's a nice color. It's a really nice color. So you'll notice I'm only drawing it from the very edges of these splodges. And the reason for that is that I don't wanna saturate my brush. I'm already close to saturating it anyway because of base coating and it's wetter. So we wanna take absolute care. So you can smush this, that's painting it with wiping, just pull any hairs off the escape, or you can stipple it. The stippling I tend to say for areas that are more difficult to get into the cracks. We'll be doing two coats whatever we do, so a mix is fine. I tend to hit one with one style on the first pass, and then if I need a different style, I'll use that on the second pass. And the idea is that we'll just get into absolutely everywhere with this, it's quite dark. So if it ends up in the shadows of the model, that's absolutely fine. Don't worry if the first coat doesn't look, you know, perfect. Paint goes much better over itself. So if we're gonna get any, you know, really nice smooth results, they're not gonna be in the first application, they'll be in the second one. And they should pretty much be perfect by the second one. I often get asked if I, why I don't paint wearing gloves. Uh, the answer is because I hate it. So if you were wondering, I don't enjoy painting with gloves. It's not my thing. I want to be attached to my model. I'm pretty clumsy anyway, and I drop stuff more if I've got gloves on, even if they're the nice black tattooing style ones. They, you know, they just don't work well for me. 
I don't have issues with the model getting greasy or anything like that, but I do tend to wash my hands uh, before I start painting. And if I've been sweating because it's summer or because I've been concentrating, if we're honest, because that does happen, um, I'll just go and wash my hands. It's good to stand up and take a break from your painting table anyway, for your back and for posture, so. Probably should have gone back to my dampening pad sooner just for keeping that high quality thinned base coat. I'm going to leave this bit here because I want somewhere to hold it by. It's going to be that bit, so I'll leave that until the very last part of the model. It's important to get in the big blocky areas. Areas that stick out are much easier to fast base coat at the very end, and because they stick out, they dry quicker as well, especially if you've got a hairdryer to hand. It's the recesses that take longer, therefore they'll be the areas that I hit first. Second coat time, I'm already looking good, but this should go down pretty much perfectly. Oh, it's so hard for me to not make the recesses darker. Yeah. Well, there's no going back now. We'll try and do one. It's going to be a more reverent than I was expecting attempt to copy the original. I can always go further to white or something, I guess. But um, yeah, it's not my fave. <laughs> I love contrast. Contrast in color, not Citadel contrast. Although I also enjoy contrast paints. It's a very low profile kind of fine paint, like it doesn't feel bitty or grainy at all. In fact, the fact that I didn't clean my base coating brush before I did this, um, or I didn't clean it fully last session, it's showing up a lot more than it would do normally because the paint has got such a, uh, a smooth finish. So yeah, I'm gonna get punished for that. It's a bit too late now. <laughs> oh well. the joys of one take videos. Watch Byron screwing things up for half an hour straight. Wonderful. Constantly twisting the brush, I'm always using it from all sides or from all aspects. I know it's round. Okay, so we've got a base coat down. It's pretty much solid all over. Quite happy with it, apart from the fact that I didn't clean my extra large brush beforehand. Um, we can just work that into the weathering of the piece. We'll pretend it was on purpose. This thing is in a war though, you know, it doesn't need to look flawless. This, this one won't be a showroom fresh model. So the only time I drop down in brush size is if I can't reach somewhere. I think I can pretty much reach everywhere I need to reach on this model though. And maybe we can cover some of those areas in some weathering later if, you know, if it turns out that it's not helping the final paint job. Paint's remaining workable on the palette for a fair while. I don't think it's got retarder in it, but it's not drying out super quick. Okay, that's enough for me as far as the base coat goes. So. Uh, yeah, let's rock on. I'm gonna give my brush a little bit of a clean. I'll show you that on the palette. <laughs> so rotating it from all angles, twisting constantly. Back to the dampening pad. This has still got a little moisture in. I won't add any more yet because I wanted more in the base coating stages than I would do for the other stages anyway. And what we should get is this brush finishing up much cleaner than it started. <laughs> I 
I'll probably keep this for, this is an older one that I use for base cutting. I'll probably keep this for maybe two more steps before changing to a different brush. Okay, feeling much cleaner, looking much cleaner. You can start seeing it becoming cleaner in the center of the brush. And if we dip it in, not much is coming off onto my hand. That's about perfect. Oh, we missed a bit down there. We'll catch that with the first steps anyway. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna shade, um, I'll probably just do two sides, this side and this side currently. I think that's the plan. And we're gonna take the much lighter of our grays, well, the gray rather than the black. That was our predominant color in the last step, so this should be okay. What we're gonna do is we're gonna test it top right, remembering our light source, and the idea is that this is the area that would be the lightest anyway. So when we pop a little bit of stippling down. <laughs> yeah, it's looking okay. This stage doesn't have to be perfectly smooth at all. And given that we're aiming to end up quite light, we're trying our best, even if it's hard. Uh, we want this kind of light all over, so I'd be covering the majority of the model in this, just leaving our previous step as kind of the shading. It's a lot heavier that time. That might be a bit of a mistake, but we should be able to phase it out. It's quite a large panel as well. I'll just remove some more on the palette. Kind of stipple it, fade it out using pressure. Make sure to use the dampening pad, that will dilute it a bit as well. Just aiding the transparency. These bits I haven't glued in, so they're rotating, so I'll brace them when I'm painting them. Any circular session is a session section is always a perfect place to be really demonstrating lighting. So this bit here, the light will be hitting loads. I'll make sure that ends up by far the brightest. And this bit down here, the light will barely be hitting. I probably won't even touch at all with this step. So I haven't gone back for paint. I've gone back to the dampening pad. So this is really dilute now. And I can use that to kind of soften out that area where we were a bit heavy handed and clumsy. Not too bad, some, some variation in there is okay. The main issue is that I might have put the paint down that's a bit too thick. I think we'll get away with it though, just about. But I'm actually gonna just do all of this block at this stage. The foundation steps are quite important anyway, and we've got a mixed up color here, so we may as well try and keep the coherency. stays workable a fair while on the palette, but it also stays workable a fair while on the model. So um, worth noting, it's not a particularly fast drying paint. That can be both a good thing and a bad thing. Hitting these from 45 degree angles, trying to catch these edges and the top edge, and also trying to leave some shadows in the areas that don't get hit as a result of hitting it with an angle. Definitely need more on my brush than that. So I've not got much of the brown and the weathering that is pretty evident in the model. I will, maybe I should have involved that already. Um, what I might do is do a quick pass involving some of the weather black and the roof brown now uh, from the undersides of the model. Just hit the roof and then we'll do that step. Okay, so we've slayed our way through the uh, the dark, the lark dark gray. Used up a lot in this step, that's okay. It was meant to hit pretty much every aspect of the model anyway, so that's absolutely fine. I'm gonna start transitioning to a little bit of traditional dry brushing now. Getting close here, you should see these picked up really nice. Always think of this as a face. And hit the top of the uh, the weapon raised as well. Okay, so jump to a smaller dry brush. Maybe just a large. So this one hasn't been cleaned very well. Not sure if you can see the dust coming off that. So I'm gonna take that off. 
And then what we're going to do is take a little bit of this weather black. And we're going to start bringing that in from the lower left aspects of our piece. This is such a nice color. We've got roof brown as well. It's a very, very warm brown in comparison to this dull one. Like GW style, that would be like uh, Doom Bull, I guess. Or like Rhinox Hide, and this is a lot more like Dryer's Bark. And then to try and keep coherency and grab a little bit of our black. And I'm going to have to use some of our lock gray, otherwise it's just going to look too different. Again, from the edge, we're not trying to saturate anything here. Okay, so just like we started from top right, we're going to go to bottom left. This should bring in a lot of the nuance that we were hoping for and uh, definitely help us keep a, you know, a more accurate and, and reverent copy of the, uh, of the original from the films. All the bottom left sections. Probably not completely realistic, but it's a nice easy rule to follow and you can't look at two sides at once. Uh, or more than two sides at once rather because you can only be looking at it from an angle like this so it's kind of fine for me. I already like how this is looking. I think that's kind of okay. I actually get away with putting a bit more of the black in there but again I'll resist over contrasting. The faster we work the more we're going to need to go to our dampening pad. Take a little of the black. Let's see how dark we can get away with just, just the very tips. Like these are literally entirely out of the sun, so I could see them being quite dark. That's my excuse anyway. I guess we could hit all of the undercarriage with this as well. nice thing about having used this angle from this side is we can use the exact opposite from the other one. We'll probably get away with it. It's pretty aggressive. We've done our base coating by hand, so we've got a thicker base coat than you'd have if you had an airbrush. As a result, the piece we're working with is pretty durable. Um, you don't want to go too aggressive, but you can go more aggressive than perhaps you think you normally could without knocking anything off. We're not trying to scrape the model, we're always poking at it. And I'm just going to hit all of the underside of these bits and the entirety of the underside of the model actually. It's kind of more mechanical around here, there's more pit parts joining it. I think that's absolutely fine. And it's much better than it being a pure black by a long, long way. It doesn't have to be perfect at all. It's on the underside, people won't really see it that much. Okay. Right, that's already added some interest. That's kind of what I was hoping for. I think we've got a way with forgetting to add that in earlier. So let's continue. A cleaner brush than we had before. So for reference, this is my old, it's like more beaten up base coating one. I always start with this one and I move on to one that's a bit newer. I don't know how to use multiple, um, but I've got some pretty ancient ones. My base coating brush is probably two years old, so it, uh, it actually helps increase the life expectancy of your good brushes if you replace a tiny bit before you need to replace. The other thing you can do is keep them for metallics or stuff like that, contaminated paints. Okay, so we're going to start using a much lighter gray now, and this will make a really big difference incredibly fast. So. Grab a little bit of that, pull it into the palette where we've been working. Remember this brush doesn't have any previous colors on it, so there's no homogenization going on. So 
If you want anything to be evident, we've got to re-include it again. Take a tiny bit of the black. And seems okay. Starts up right. Maybe we jumped a little bit too aggressively, but I think we can get away with stippling it out. We still haven't done the dry brushing stage yet all over, which will really soften everything that we're doing. Because there's a high percentage of white in this, it's actually got pretty good coverage in comparison to the previous one. So it'll land looking more aggressive than the previous color would have. That's a lot too aggressive. Well, I wasn't wrong. <laughs> yeah, we definitely need to fade more carefully. So you can either fade more carefully with your actions, your dilution and load of technical stuff, or we can mix some of your previous painting, which is a lot more forgiving. So we'll do that. I think because this is quite a matte paint, I'm going to have to just be a little bit more careful with it. Satin ones are a bit more forgiving in general for blending. This big splodge here that we didn't particularly want, we'll uh, have to deal with later. I think we'll be okay. And we can start involving some traditional dry brushing. And this is the step which will really soften everything we've done. Any mistakes we've got, that will be way less evident because everything's getting homogenized and pulled together as a result of this. So I'm just going to repeat that all over the model, uh, especially on the top, obviously as it's getting most of the light and especially on the top right hand sides and aspects. Too much water in the dampening pad or too aggressive a push into it. The back's a lot darker. I've missed out a step on it, but uh, I think it's kind of like back panels. Maybe we can get away with that just about. So just going to rock into straight away, adding a little bit more of this. Work it all the way into the brush. Moving to more traditional dry brushing now. I'm going to do it directionally, coming from the top right. Let's make sure we hit those edges as well as stippling. Also carefully come from the exact opposite just to make sure we highlight all of our edges. Should find that we pretty much rapidly start accelerating through the steps now because each of them that we do, we need to cover less. We're getting more for the edges, just the top rights. Um, and the colors are also a lot stronger. So for example here, yeah, a, a magic huge step in the detailing just by doing a directional dry brush from the top right. Carefully hit the edges from bottom left using a rolling highlight, much more specific, less general. And grab the stippling when we're happy with the amount of it on.
always working it into the brush thoroughly, it'll help mix it with our previous step. Just make sure we don't, we're decreasing the chances of us going, you know, high progressive with any steps and doing something that we can't fix or can't buff out. Definitely a warmer brown than our last one. Uh, brown gray, rather. Might have to do a bit of post shading though. <sighs> Just to get that weathering in there. If you're ever trying a new paint range guys don't uh, expect instant perfection it's just not realistic all paint ranges have got their own traits and own nuances and it can take years to you know get to grips with certain aspects of a paint range one of the most common ones to have issues with straight away is scale 75 because they're ultra ultra matte they've got a lot of retarders in them and extenders to extend the working time on them if you use them for the first time then it doesn't go right you didn't suddenly get bad at painting you're just adjusting to a very very different style of paint these aren't too different from what I used to, but they are, they are a little bit different. So it'd be silly for me to expect to get things perfectly right first time. Of course, wonderfully, the first time we do a one take video, uh, the video uh, corrupts or stops or fails five minutes before we actually finish. So, unfortunately, um, this is where we got to. Now, the only step that was really missed was me beginning to involve Reefer White for a final stage of highlights, just to catch the edges here. But I am pretty pleased with this. Let's grab a other one for comparison. So. This range is a lot more matte. You can see that from my palette. It's really like, not loads, but you know, it is a matte paint range. Um, so you end up with a kind of, well, just like the film, that kind of dry, um, finished feel to it, not necessarily, you know, like a shiny one. Pretty good for putting down nice flat sections. Uh, it stipples well, it's very fine. Uh, the pigments are really fine. Some of the colors are super interesting. This is a, I'm gonna use this a lot this weather black I really like and you can just tell from how it behaves on the palette got this kind of creamy smoothness to it which I'm a fan of um, I would maybe try putting some satin medium in there or something just to help me uh, with how I like to do the stippling stages and then maybe go traditional at the end and I think I need to play more with the weathering but that is a really really solid uh, first attempt like I was saying, there's always an adjustment here to using any new paints. And I got on with that one pretty well. Coverage is fairly solid, um, feels fairly durable, um, dries at a normalish speed, you know, not faster, not slower or anything like that, but uh, always great to try out something new. And any excuse to paint one of these is a good one. So I'll try out a little bit more on the legs. I think maybe I'll do some weathering with the colors that I haven't really brought into things yet. All of these. Got a very nice rusty orange there, and then a natural rust rust, more of a brownie. Um, they should come into things quite nicely. Uh, this may be working its way in the recesses. And then this, which is kind of that kind of tan sandy vibe going on that is present in a lot of the stuff in the films, you know, low down the legs or on the base of it if it's something that flies. Um, I don't know how I'm gonna apply them because I wanna do it not through the airbrush. Uh, maybe I'll just make a, uh, a very wet, uh, diluted water mix with them and slosh them about a bit. But for now, on the fundamentals, on the basics of, you know, just putting down volumes, really, really quite enjoyed that. And we've got quite a lot of depth and interest in there. It's one of these things where you get closer and closer and closer and you just see more and more and more. And then when you put it back, it, you know it's not, you know, a perfect flawless flat grey, which it wasn't meant to be. And, um, that kind of really works. So yeah, enough waffling. Overall pleased. Um, 
seem really good to use. They've got differing degrees of wetness and coverage a bit, but not huge variants there. So that's the only kind of criticism I would have or thing to be mindful of when using them, as well as just holding in mind they are a matte paint range, which can be a bonus or a negative, depending on how you want to look at it. All right, guys, we are a little bit husky, so we can keep this talking to minimum. I'm basically going to bring up, uh, probably in time lapse, uh, the legs of this model to about this stage, and I'll resume with the last bit that got chopped off um, for just the last finishing steps, the lighter colors uh, for some normal video. So let's jump in. Okay, so got to this stage, as ever, doesn't look hugely neat, that won't matter. I've got a few kind of transitions going on from light to dark in areas. They've been pushed, shading a little bit with the weather black and a tiny bit of the roof brown, but mostly the weather black being mixed in with our stuff. Um, <clears throat> we've also been using the, um, the black black, the engine black. So it doesn't matter, it's not neat here. What we're going to be doing is using mainly the ILM Armour Grey now. I've swapped to a, uh, a shiny, uh, uninfected brush. It's not got dark colours in it. And we're just going to start kind of softly, softly working our highlights up a bit. Twist in the brush, get it from all angles. Looking pretty good. That's the type of highlighting effect that we're going for. And then we'll test it from the top. A little bit stippling. And then the moment we know we're happy with that, then we can go to the edges. You might have noticed in the time lapse, pretty regularly going back, just to make sure that we're doing things about right. Um, the, the big blob can look darker from some aspects, but I think what we're going to have to do is, um, because the legs are going to be more weathered, we're going to have to do them and then kind of assess our coherency at that point and see if we think we're happy with it. Not 
necessarily only looking to hit the upward facing edges, but they're the ones that are the most important. So you know, I can hit some lips, hit some tiny delicate edge highlights on the go here, even with a big brush. But uh, those upwards facing ones, they're the ones that we want the brightest. Obviously, if something's gonna end up kind of uh, internal, and it's gonna be largely hidden, then maybe you don't need to hit it. Got his edge highlights appearing now. This is a perfect piece to have a look at it on. Easy. Cheating, isn't it? The best type. Might do a little bit of stippling on these areas where we want it to go a lighter shade, but even if I should have painted the entire model lighter, uh, that doesn't mean that I should do the bottom half correctly and end up with an incoherent model. So the most important thing at this point is that we get a nice cohesive looking final piece, even if next time I'd uh, end up doing it a little bit lighter. Areas like this, you know, you've got so many hyper textured zones. If they look a little bit flat now, although the uh, the main things in the film do look very flat, um, you can just make sure that you hit all those edges and then suddenly you've got a massive amount of visual interest. Everything speeds up a lot after this step, but we've got to hit every single edge here. So we're going to be here a little while. Too heavy. Still too heavy. Definitely going to experiment with these paints and a, a medium because the uh, the more matte a paint is, the more tricky it can be with uh, dry brushing in particular. <sighs> and there's a few little characteristics where I just know I'm having to be a little bit more careful than I would be if it was a satin paint. So mixing some medium in would allow me to uh, basically go at the same speed as normal without having to be careful. I could get a really good result with these, um, but it just takes a little bit more time and care with the stippling. I mean, we're still gonna finish the model in record time to a high level, so it's probably just fine, isn't it? We need to be too hard on ourselves. It's the first time we've used them as well. Dampening powder. Beginning to get there now. We should end up with quite a lot of visual interest on these pieces from the stippling below, the dry brushing above. big thing you get from the uh, the combination of the two techniques. You get a gradual fade from one color to another, but it's not just, you know, like a, a flawless perfect one. It's a um, slightly interesting, more natural looking one, especially if something's been to war, I really like it. Okay, so that's looking pretty solid. Do the same again on the other leg, on the central section, and then we'll, uh, we'll hop back. Okay, so looking pretty cohesive. All matching pretty nicely top to bottom, which I'm pleased with. Uh, a lot of the time you just need to hold the faith and remember that until you've done the last couple of steps, things really aren't gonna tie together well. So on the subject of the last couple of steps, let's grab some reefer white. Nice color this one. Kind of a, uh, a slightly warm, off-white, creamy, ivory color. So what we're gonna do is we've 
wetted the brush a little bit. We're going to mix in the same place on the palette that we were mixing our previous colour, the Armour Grey. And with the brush being dampened a couple of times beforehand, we should be reawakening a fair bit of our last colour in there, which will soften this because we don't want to go bright, 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 bright. And then we're going to take a lot of care, basically. Hit these edges carefully. Probably only the upwards facing ones. Now, because this is so much brighter, whoops, wonderful wiring. Okay, never happened. Um, because this is so much brighter, we need to be really careful, even hitting the middle. I'll show you here, so it doesn't matter. Even hitting the middle of a flat section, it's going to pick up on the tiniest of, you see there's a line there from casting or something. It's going to pick on stuff really noticeably, so we are aiming for edges with this. I know we're using a big brush, but you need to have the intent in your mind and therefore in your hand when you're using it. I'm going to hit that edge and this will work. Keep the face. So I'm going to hit this edge here, the upwards facing one and nothing else. Go all over. Just catching the ones that are upwards facing a little bit for that final edge highlight step. Anything circular is great, it kind of shades itself. Very carefully top to bottom. And what you should get is it'll get softer and softer as you go as it mixes more and more with the previous steps of paints that are still laying around there inside the brush. Not doing any stippling here, might do a tiny bit just to buff up the top of these panels. That looks great actually. There's okay because it was already light and we've barely got anything left on the brush. Details like these are just asking for it. Rivets are wonderful. Keep these strokes top to bottom. One leg down. Dampening pad. Don't think I need to add more paint yet. No. Get these edges. Nothing like some uh, <laughs> two second precision edge highlights on a flowing detail. I'm not going to do anything in this middle section here. It's quite dark in the piece um, in the film, so I'm just going to leave it as is. All right, we good them back together. <laughs> the nice thing about uh, these tight positional pieces is that <coughs> they're not so soft that things flop about and it really lets you strike a nice pose with this stuff which I'm a huge fan of. Is that anywhere that's been missed? Yeah I think these these top sections, nice. Anything upwards facing. But also some areas on the bottoms like this. And that's quite viewable from the side of the miniature. Make sure it gets hit. There we go. He's a good boy. I do love these models. As everyone knows on this channel, I think the greats paint just absolute pleasure. The entire thing has gone pretty fast, especially considering it's with brand new paints and a little bit of experimentation and screwing up and trying to fix things and learning. 
final step, let's do a little bit of battle damage. So I'm going to grab a, well, I grab, I think I'll grab a small, quite an old battered one. Take some of our black. Makes it here, it's really clear. And some of our weathered black, which is definitely not black, but it's a wonderful color. This is a brilliant type of color to kind of soften a true black. Just knock it back a little. So we did some kind of light wear <coughs> and uh, indications of scorching and stuff like that on this. I really liked how they turned out and I think the blemishes look quite good. So let's have a little look. We can add some more bashed sections too subtle or maybe not enough black I remember um, with this stuff like where would it hit like is something gonna get shot from the front it's gonna get shot from the back is it gonna get into recesses probably not so the edges that it's the edges basically bits that are going to get the, the brunt of any abuse are going to be on the edge. Add a little bit more black in. So it just adds a little bit more realism to the fact that this thing has been in the war. Definitely get away with a bit more on the feet. Again, our other black is overpowering the normal black more than I thought it would, so add a higher proportion of that in. Also, when I've got a bit less on, I can go and smudge a bit of shading. Don't put it in the identical place on both feet, I'm so bad for doing that. Keep it scattered about, nice and random. I'll go for one of, one of these uh, nice kind of front armor sections because they're really bright at the top. So if we can get a good one kind of blasting off this, it should really show up. That's the damping part a bit. A bit too much. That's because I wetted it with a large brush. Not had time to evaporate fully yet. Just a bit too much water in there. Should one here on that leg. It's interesting, I, I want to pick exactly the same places, so obviously we won't. I'm meant to have received mirrored random attacks on both sides. Think of the angle of the thing that I'm imagining here. some proper black in the middle of that, carefully. This weather black is such a useful colour. Okay, I think that'll probably do nicely. I am tempted to get a bit of this involved. Let's um, test out how these workers are washed because it's going to be a thorough test. Get 
themselves are pretty heavily used too. Now, worth noting, going on a pretty matte surface, we're at risk of uh, tidal stains or tea stains or coffee stains, depending on what you want to call them here. So I'm going to test this somewhere internal in a very small amount initially. I should dust it first. All right, so we're done. Where's our man again? Chicken. Chicken or a duck, isn't it? From this, definitely feels more duck. Anyway, here's the model again. Obviously pretty pleased with how he turned out. I like the sooty stuff. I should have done that more. I really like the contrast it adds. Um, should have gone more full on with the staining, but you know, he was pretty quick. I could spend more time weathering him. Could be streaking grind. That would look good. Uh, overall impressions of the paint, pretty consistent, um, fairly high quality. Um, in terms of how much it protects the model, uh, I'm, not, I'm not so sure as durability. I guess I'll get that more when I handle this stuff more and when I've used it more in future tutorials. So I'll report back on that later. Quite matte, obviously. The finish is pretty smooth though. Um, the lower parts, I should have diluted the base coats more and that's kind of lowered the quality of the paint job a little. Not loads, but a little bit that I can see anyway. So that's something to note, but you should be doing that with every paint ever. And um, I'm quite excited to try out some of the, uh, the other colors. I like the nuanced ones, like the blues and the greens that are fairly clear. I'm not so excited by their rich military for me, but stuff like the, uh, the brown black that I've been talking about already, I really, really enjoyed. Anyway, he looks great. I had fun doing this. Please do let us know your opinions on this type of video and the format and whether you would be interested in, you know, put some suggestions down below if there are other products you'd like to see us, you know, reviewing or testing or giving our opinions on or stuff like that. Final shout out again, big texture palette is big. Pick one up now from the store, uh, help support the channel. It's great, look at the size of it. Why wouldn't you want that? It's absolutely massive. Massive palette for your massive brush. Maybe we'll need a bigger XL. Maybe that's a thing. Who knows? Maybe that's coming soon. Who knows? There is some stuff coming soon. If you're at Adepticon, please do pop by our stand because we've got some super exciting stuff out this year and possibly one of the most exciting things is going to be uh, popped out into the open at Adepticon in an early, 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 early format. Uh, it's not something that's going to be out super, super soon, but it's something that I have been working on with, uh, with some other people actually for about three years. So um, we're pretty excited to bring that to you. Anyway, thank you very much for checking out the video. Please like, comment and subscribe. Grab your extra, extra, extra large texture palettes. We'll catch you in the next video.